Hey, Randy. Hey, guys. Welcome back to New Record Day. It is uh, good to be back. I know that it's been a minute. I've had a. Uh, I've had some. A lot of things going on, actually. Um, a lot of good things going on. This uh, studio slash listening room, man cave, whatever you want to call it, that is underway. And so we got those big storage containers pulled out, which is exciting. And uh, they're going to pour concrete today. They're going to come out and pour some concrete. So Sarah is at the park with the kiddos. And I just had a little bit of time to set something up so we can finally hear these X4s. One of the reasons why I've also been a little bit absent is I've been having some small health concerns. It turned out to be a big fat nothing, which I am super grateful for. I've been having these kind of like dizzy spells and, you know, last. Friday I had like a small lump in my throat and I was like what's going on dizzy and lumpy throats that's not a good thing is it Randy no it's not well it turns out that I had an infection from a root canal that I just recently had done and so I am feeling a lot better things are finally turning around I don't care what Josh Valor says, he's not a real dentist. So, he's super affordable, but man, I, I, I can't recommend Joshua Valor dentistry any longer. I'm probably gonna leave a very colorfully worded Yelp review, to be honest. Man, woo! Back right molar, holy smokes. Hurt like a son of a gun. Enough of that. Let's check out the X4s. Binaural sound clips with commentary. The purpose of these sound clips is the sound clips combined with commentary. So a lot of folks are gonna show up and they're gonna say, oh, it just sounds like it's playing out of my iPhone and yeah, you're an idiot. We all know that. Thanks for letting us know. Here's the deal. You need to put on a pair of headphones. A lot of hard work goes into this and we have Randy, Mr. Randy Neumann, Newman, and um, it is a binaural dummy head. And so what we're doing is we are trying to mimic what it's like listening to these speakers in this particular environment, but in order to get as close as we can to that, you gotta put on a pair of headphones. Listening to this back on your speakers isn't gonna do you any good. I can't stress it enough. Um, I am practicing and working on some different techniques with my Earthworks microphones that will allow you to play stuff back on your speakers, but I'm still working on that. More to come with that down the road. Anyways, the rig is the rig that I've been using for the last couple of videos. It is all holo audio stuff being fed by the Inuos Zenith. We have the Serene preamp, we have the Maydac, uh, we've got these uh, Burson Timekeeper monoblocks, which I've mentioned a few times now, the Grand Tour monoblocks, and they are fantastic. I'm a big fan of those. Uh, it just sounds great, especially with the X4s, and this whole system is just, there's some synergy going on, which is really cool. Uh, let's see. I think that's it. Yeah, that's it. All of the sound clips that we're using are from Epidemic Sound. You gotta have a membership in order to use the songs royalty free. And so that's something that is, um, is provided by being a patron. You know, as soon as you're a patron, that opens the door to have access to all of these clips. And so I'll post these in patron and then you can download these clips and you can play them back on your system and see how they sound. and you get the idea. All right, let's go ahead and have some fun and get started. And off we go.
are listening pretty loud, and there's something that I should have done, and I'm going to do it now. You can probably hear this. Maybe back here. Probably back there. We do have some footfall issues. You know, the house is raised up, and so we do have some footfall issues. The new studio is going to be taking care of that for sure. But I want you to get an idea of how the uh, room sounds. So this is my voice from the left speaker. And this is my voice from the right speaker. I do want to mention that we're playing pretty loud right now. About as loud as the last sound clips that we did with the Perlistons, which are just off to my right over here. And those are fantastic sounding speakers, but what they aren't are these. These are open baffle. This is a different beast. This is a different animal. And I think that you will hear some of the, some of the differences here in the sound clips. Pay attention to bass, how quickly the bass is there and then it's not there. Listen to the impact and the speed, the agility that the X4s offer because that's what they are definitely all about. just this kind of guy that just never sleeps. Uh, he's always looking to refine and, you know, he just, he refuses to stop refining and getting better. And I think that the X4s are a clear evolution of his lineup. We have these beautifully rounded edges on the sides, which help with diffraction. And the base is, uh, you might be able to see them in frame, but the bases, and I'll talk about this when we get to the review, are aluminum, thick, heavy aluminum. And we have ISO acoustics Gaia feet installed on the bottom of those uh, bases. And so that helps with any kind of footfall issues, um, resonances, you know, bleeding into the floor. And I just got to say, uh, it's very clear and very evident that what the X4s establish is a step forward for spatial audio and you can hear it and the voicing on these speakers is intoxicating. I don't, I'm using silly audiophile jargon and I kind of want to throw up in my mouth just for saying stuff like that but here's the deal. They are intoxicating. And the reason that they are intoxicating is this is the kind of speaker that you just start playing stuff that you thought you knew, stuff that you thought you were familiar with, and then you start hearing little nuggets of information that is popping out and you're like, wow, I feel as if I am hearing this song for the very first time. And anytime that I sit down and I listen with these, that's, that's essentially what happens. Now. In contrast, I want to be careful with my words because those per listen speakers that we just recently listened to, I would actually say they are more hyper detailed than the X4s are. So I don't want I don't want you to think just because information is popping out that I'm saying that these are a very analytical or detail centric speaker, detail oriented speaker. There is a lot of detailed information, but the voicing lends itself just to open things up in a very natural way, similar to the Sapphires. And one of the reasons why I fell in love with those is you're just getting a very natural presentation where with any other speaker, if there's a blanket that is just over the speaker and it's not as revealing as it should be, the X4s, they remove that blanket. And so you just have this window-like 
view into the music and it is truly intoxicating and never ever fatiguing no doubt about that in time so things bouncing off walls and reverb and all of these things that you hear that is going to be uh, time sensitive information is top notch um, you know where I remember when we took these over to Danny's uh, over at GR research and he listened to them man it didn't take long uh, once we had them set up and everything was just you know playing the way that it should he immediately was like man I I think these might be my favorite spatials that I've heard. And he went on to say that these, the voicing and some of the clarity that he is looking for in his own designs, he's hearing it in these. And I completely agree with him. And one thing that Danny is very good at listening for is that information in the time domain. So that is a big part or a main priority of his designs is does this speaker lend itself to that three-dimensional sound field where the speakers are just not in the room? And that's, that is um, easier said than done. That takes years to master and to get a speaker to really be able to do that. And the X4s do it with the best of them. There's no doubt about that. speed agility impact um, they just have this like kapow type thing going on there's no doubt about that um, and it's it's fun and another thing that I should mention is you know I don't have I don't have the same bass in this room that I did in my previous room in Arizona I actually was able to get deeper bass out of the sapphires in the old room than I am in this room and so the same thing is going to be said about the X4s in here is I know for a fact that room dependent, you're going to be able to drop bigger bombs with these and you're going to be able to hit even lower um, with more confidence than I'm able to hit in this room. There's no question or no doubt about that in my room. And in fact, the FS of these woofers is actually lower than the Sapphires. So make no mistake. Um, these do drop bombs. I, I don't think that anyone is going to feel the need to rush out and get a subwoofer when they hear the X4s as long as they're playing in, them in a, you know, appropriate room. They're going to hear plenty of bass. Um, they, they know how to hit. And that when you hear it, it's like, man, that is very satisfying and deep and powerful. But depending on your room, they might actually hit even lower and harder than what you're hearing in this particular room, which is mind numbing. The imaging on the X4 
high scores, and you can hear it in that song. Anything percussive where you have detailed information in a particular spot in the recording, uh, imaging and staging go hand in hand, but the imaging is phenomenal with the X4s. Uh, a large part of that is we do have what is called controlled directivity. I've talked about this on my channel quite a bit. Essentially, we have this funnel on top that is controlling the directivity of that air motion tweeter. And that AMT, that air motion tweeter, is a studio grade AMT. Clayton Shaw is not shopping at Parts Express and buying an AMT for a quarter and then selling you crazy expensive speakers just because he can. No. These are extremely transparent and incredible sounding AMTs. And this is coming from a guy, and a lot of you guys already know this, and you're probably like, what, what did Ron just say? I don't really like AMTs all that much. It, for me, I just, I find all too often that they can call attention to themselves. I just don't love a lot of the AMTs that I've heard. These, are a different thing. I've had some guys over here that have listened, you know, stopped by, they're in town, or a friend came over, and I'm not making this up. I wouldn't make this up. I'm just telling you exactly what they said. A lot of them walked away saying, that might be the best sounding tweeter I have ever heard, or I've never heard, you know? It's just like, I'm not hearing a tweeter, I'm just hearing a top end that is to die for, and I agree. I think that he, he's he got an incredible sounding top end on these speakers. It's phenomenal. And imaging and staging is top notch with the X4s. is fantastic. Uh, I especially love uh, female vocals. So upper mid range is it. There's a there's a texture and a tone in there that I'm hearing in the upper mid range that does remind me of Danny's voicing, where there's just just enough edge to keep things interesting, and again, nothing is ever being crammed down your throat. Nothing ever sounds shouty or edgy. Um, there's just enough bite and edge to keep things interesting. You get the, um, you know, you get the details as the vocalist steps up to the mic and you just, you can hear every single detail in their voice, but at the same time, you're getting body in their voice. And so it's not just detailed for the sake of being detailed, no, it's with that detailed information, there is also a realistic and natural body that is attached to that detail. And when you have both of those working at the same time, that's when goosebumps happen, magic happens, because you're like, holy cow, combined with this superior imaging and soundstage, I have somebody that is truly right in front of me singing and especially with female vocals, I get that effect every single time that I sit down and I listen to the X4s. Ocean is near, but you dug a hole. 
So male vocals, uh, I would say the exact same thing that I just said. I feel like I'm on repeat um, with the female vocals. Again, um, you, you have this presentation where, again, you have all the detail that you're looking for in a male vocal voicing combined with body, genuine body, and that is probably going to be one of the things that really freaks out a lot of audiophiles that haven't heard open baffle speakers because you're looking at, you know, I'm, let me be careful about how I say this because I don't want Billy Bob, you know, coming out of the woodwork saying, oh, I can just slap on a bunch of woofers onto a board and then it's open baffle. No, Billy Bob. No, you can't. You can't. Well, you can, but it's going to sound awful. Here's the deal. When a lot of folks see open baffle speakers and they just see these woofers that are attached to this very, very slim board, it's only you know three inches, a lot of them are sitting there looking at it saying there is no way in the world that is going to have any kind of real body. It's going to sound thin because they are looking at a speaker that, especially compared to a box speaker, it is genuinely thin. Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> that is just a bunch of nonsense. It's, it, you know, maybe you've heard bad open baffle speakers in really bad rooms set up at really bad audio shows, and you walked away hearing, you know, exactly that. I'm telling you right now, I would, I would bet you dollars of donuts and I would eat my hat in the next video if I'm wrong. Anybody sitting down here, any hi-fi enthusiast or audiophile, you would not walk away saying, you know, the thing about those X4s is they sound really thin, especially through, you know, the male vocal content. Nobody would say that. There is genuine, velvety, beautiful body. And when you hear it, man, it is so intoxicating. And another thing that I'll say is, without a box, okay? So we're getting back to, you guys probably have listening fatigue from me rambling about open baffle speakers, but well, I'm feeling feisty, so deal with it. Without a box, you do not have any kind of resonances as a consequence that is being piled up or added to the vocals. So what we have with the X4s is the music plus the X4s equals the music. There is no coloration that is happening from a box. And when you hear that body without anything added to it, you're hearing the real thing and it's spectacular. percussive, anything female vocals, anything that's going to just sound big and open, man, these are going to knock your socks off. And they're, they're not going to have, they're not going to have many rivals at their price point. You know, you jump up to like the Perlissons if you're not a fan of open baffle for whatever reason, those are a mighty fine speaker and they do a lot of things right. There's no question about that. And the effect of that with the Perlissons, the effect of that eerie sort of stepping up to the mic thing, it's there. And I'm not going to take that away from them. 
I think some of the main uh, key benefits to moving in the direction of open baffle is going to be not so much in the mid band or upper upper mid band mid range. It's going to be as we start going lower into bass and you know this is just the biggest thing with open baffle bass is it's there and then it's gone. It's quick. The consequence to it is you need to be able to get them away from the wall. Minimum of, of three feet. There are some spatial audio users that swear two and a half feet and they're good to go. And that might be true. Uh, but many conversations with Clayton Shaw, I've heard him mention the three foot rule as the place where they would recommend that you start. And as long as you have that, you're going to be hearing bass that you've never heard before. Everything else though, mid-range, upper mid-range, I would say that it's going to be just a different flavor of ice cream comparing these to the $10,000 per listens that we just listened to. These are obviously cheaper than that. Um, man, it's close. And, and I think that side by side, I, I think we're going to have a split room. I think it's going to come down to, you know, maybe room restrictions, how far away they can get the speaker into the room, how big their room is, things like that might actually dictate the purchase. But man, I have a feeling that what would not be divided in that particular, you know, showdown between the Perlissons and the X4s is going to be bass. I, I really genuinely believe with all my heart that we're going to see the vast majority of the folks hearing how quick and agile the base is with open baffle and they're going to want that. sapphires you know it's a question that I'm, I'm wrestling with I think that there are some key differences between the two speakers the X4s to me sound more cohesive they sound like a machine that is playing from you know one heartbeat and you know the puzzle piece that is already put together very tightly with the sapphires I feel like it's a bit tighter with the X4s and so you have this cohesive blend you know, from driver to driver that lends itself to a soundstage that is just l spooky realistic. And, you know, there's that. With the Sapphires, I do believe that there's going to be a bit more excitement through the upper mid-range frequencies as we start climbing out of the heart of mid-band, let's just say 1500 and beyond, we're going to see a, a little bit more lift and a little bit more excitement out of the sapphires than you do the x4s and so the x4s are just going to be a little bit more relaxed in that ever important very sensitive area up higher as we start climbing out of the heart of mid band those are my biggest observations between the two so far
mentioned at the beginning of this video, I believe that the X4s are a step forward for spatial audio. And I would go on to say that I think this, these might represent Clayton's best work. I think, I think he, he knocked it out of the park with the X4s. I'm anxious to finally measure these and see how they measure them. I expect them to measure well or very well. And I don't think we're going to find any, any objective issues as we take a look at the data. Um, but we'll find out. We'll take a look and see. I've already made up my mind that regardless, I, I love these speakers. I think they're fantastic. They really are a rival uh, to the Sapphires, which have been my reference speakers now for quite some time. And the X4s, I think that these, these right here are probably the best sounding open baffle speakers on this planet that you can buy, set up, and just start playing. Just good to go. Just plug them in and you're good to go. So I wouldn't say that if I didn't feel that way. So there it is. All right. We'll see you guys in the next video.